At Netroots Nation last Saturday, uh, Netroots Nation is of course a huge conference of liberal activists from, from around the country, but at this conference last Saturday in Phoenix, Bernie Sanders and Martin O'Malley both spoke. Each are obviously 2016 presidential candidates running for the Democratic Party nomination. Hillary Clinton was invited, but she did not attend. However, during both Martin O'Malley and Bernie Sanders' interviews with Jose Antonio Vargas, who is a journalist and immigration activist, they were interrupted, shall we say, by Black Lives Matter protesters. The protesters first made a huge entrance into the room. The protesters started chanting, what side are you on and say her name referring to the countless number of women who have been victims of police brutality and of course many other chants and then a couple of the activists just went on stage they started speaking you had activists in the crowd saying burn this down i mean they took over the place and they basically ended martin o'malley's interview or at least the interview on his terms the activists demanded that O'Malley tell them what his positions are on these issues, specifically police brutality, and what would he do to address these issues. And to make a long story short, it was a struggle for my boy O'Malley. This issue is so important. Black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. Oh, oh, oh. Really? How many black people have killed police officers this year? How many? Exactly. Holla at me. Stop taking that bull. I'm trying to respond to the call of your question as best I can. Do not generalize this sh I want an actual conversation to happen. Please, let's do this. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yes. Specifically, I believe every police department in America should have to report in an open and transparent and timely way all police-involved shootings, all discourtesy complaints, and all brutality complaints. What is that? Now, those policies he laid out at the end there, they sounded nice. He also stated he wanted um, civilian review boards, which is another great idea, but he, he dropped the ball with that one comment which got all those boos. Black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. Listen, I mean, it's true, all lives of course matter, but it's all about context. And right now, we're talking about a predominantly black issue, and it's kind of insulting the conversation to say, yeah, 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 but white lives matter and all lives matter too. So I understand the frustration completely, but all of the protesting and the chanting and the interruptions, they just continued. So the interview pretty much ended and now Martin O'Malley has another huge hurdle he has to cross if he has any chance of getting the nomination. This one now with black voters. Now me personally, I think this is so rude, man. I mean, this guy is just coming here trying to speak his piece, do his little interview, his little speech. But y'all have to go in there, pretty much shut the whole thing down, and make this guy talk about just your issues. That's not cool. Listen, I completely support Black Lives Matter. But if you're trying to get attention, this is just a completely rude way of going about it. Then my guy Bernie Sanders comes on stage. He does what he usually does, address the issues that everybody needs to be talking about, laying it all out there. Uh, the crowd's eating them up, and then the protests start yet again. Now, at first, Bernie was just trying to talk over them. <laughs> Not the best approach, if you ask me. But then he breaks down, and he has to address it. They wanted them to say their names on camera, on stage. So I was told that that... a couple more minutes, and then we're gonna get. They wanted them to address what they see as widespread institutional racism throughout the United States. Our lives can't wait! And for a lot of them, they did not seem satisfied by what they saw. While Senator Sanders was speaking, a lot of them just walked out on him right before he was finished. Should I continue or leave? Yeah, hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. It's okay with me. Listen, I don't know how black lives of course matter. And I spent 50 years of my life fighting for civil rights and for dignity. But if you don't want me to be here, that's okay. No, so you were on the stage with presidential candidates, but you weren't necessarily invited to be there. What happened? The program itself and the structure of the conference wasn't really lending itself to this very important conversation. I came away with the impression that, you know, they have a lot of homework to do. And I hope that they're ready to, uh, you know, really sit down and listen and talk to these communities, right, and come up and build their platform with these communities. Bernie went on to cite a statistic about youth unemployment for different ethnic groups. And for the average white high school graduate, the unemployment rate is 33%. For Hispanics, it's 36%.
And then for blacks, it is 51%. He mentioned the atrocious mass incarceration of blacks in this country, which he then linked to, our, of course, our quote, out of control criminal justice system. And he also cited a statistic that said the average black male baby has a one in four chance of ending up in our imbalanced and discriminatory criminal justice system. So looking at this with some sort of nuance, you have to admit this is a fantastic explanation of the plight of many blacks in this country. And yes, because half of black kids do not have a job, it plays a major role in those same kids being gunned down by narcissistic, egotistical police officers. But see, the problem is that many people aren't going to look at the details and the nuance of the situation. Most people, let's face it, are either too busy or too stupid to see nuance. So when they see a person addressing police brutality, and he says it happens because of a terrible criminal justice system and an economy that screws over minorities, people say, what? That's not true. Stop dancing around the issues, Bernie. Gosh, stop pivoting to economic issues. They can't see the link. See, now here's the link. Because some of y'all are going to hit the comments section and say, oh, the economy doesn't cause police brutality. That's ridiculous. No, listen up. Of course, the economy does not solely cause uh, police to beat up and kill people and disproportionately beat up and kill blacks and Latinos, of course. But as I said, it plays a major role. Think about it. Money is status in our society. The more money you have, usually the more powerful you are. So if you're rich and you have connections inside the elite, the small portions of cops that are trying to push over people and bully people, they realize this. If you're walking around in a... Armani's suit with some $500 dress shoes, the police aren't going to mess with you because some of them are bullies and the bullies don't mess with the big kids on the playground. They put it on the weak, little small kids sitting in the corner and that's poor people and much of the black and Latino communities were poor. Therefore, we have no power, literally no power and the police realize this so they prey on us. They beat us up if we say the wrong thing. They'll kill you if you resist. But they only do this to the powerless. And in this society, if you have no money, you have no power. Therefore, blacks and Latinos, much of us, have no power. But see, this is what Bernie's saying. If you have a job and you get some money in your pocket, slowly but surely we can all gain some power. And the bullies don't push us over anymore. That's what we're saying. But Bernie isn't going to spend the uh, two minutes I spent on this talking about how economic issues are the cause of many of these racial issues. One, he doesn't have the time, and two, he doesn't want to. Nobody wants to do this mess. Where I just said it's common freaking sense. Bernie at first thought people realized this. They can see details, right? They can see the nuance of these situations. But no, at Netroots, Bernie and even Martin O'Malley, they got a wake-up call. Each individual group wants you to talk about just their issues. That's why it's hard to be a politician in this country. You gotta please everybody. So Bernie has to talk about each individual group's issues in about one hour. That's the, the average time a speech goes. Labor groups, well, we, you should be able to unionize. Latinos, we shouldn't break up your families with mass de deportation. Black people, the police are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. He doesn't want to do that. So he gets to the root cause of every situation and talks about just that. Economic inequality. Money equals status. Blacks and Latinos therefore have no status. The bullies inside the police force prey on us because we have no status. He says the root cause is economic inequality and he expects us to say uh, the link and see the nuance and realize how this affects racial issues and therefore police brutality. But Bernie is starting to realize he needs to be, uh, he needs to spoon feed these issues whenever he addresses them. He has to say exactly what they want him to say. He has to do exactly what they want him to do. And then they'll be happy. You'll get a decent amount of black votes and everybody wins. But this whole situation is just ridiculous. Now, because Bernie got to the root cause of police brutality and other racial issues, this terrible criminal justice system and economic inequality, all of a sudden, Bernie has a hurdle he has to climb with many black voters. These Black Lives Matter activists, they go on Twitter, they start this hashtag, Bernie so black, mocking Bernie Sanders on black issues. This video has been seen by many people. Mainstream media starts talking about all this nonsense. The, the word spreads. This hashtag goes viral on Twitter. Great. Now Bernie has a riff of black voters. And it is so 
counterproductive. Bernie is the single worst candidate to bash on racial issues. His entire agenda revolves around helping the working and middle class and the poor. And guess what? Much of the black and Latino communities are the working class and the middle class and the poor. Now you want to trust Hillary Clinton and her semi-progressive, semi-establishment agenda to help the black community? No! That lady there in the Bernie Sanders clip, she said the candidates, they have their homework to do. Sorry, with all due respect, you need to do your homework. Research these racial issues, find out what their root cause is, and then see Bernie Sanders' positions. And you'll see just how effective Bernie's plan is in fixing all these racial issues you guys love to talk about.